Thank you to the witnesses. Uh, great testimony, lots of great uh, documents in here. I really appreciate it. And uh, I, I, I come from New York State, which got a tremendous amount of money for unemployment insurance uh, and a tremendous amount of fraud. And uh, I just wanted to address this first, I think, to um, either, well, first I'll go to Ms. Miller, maybe Ms. Simon first, and Ms. Miller have you comment. Um, the previous Department of Labor OIG report provided oversight and the unemployment insurance program stated that some internal controls uh, had traditionally been used or recommended by to the states, but were not used. So I cite back to uh, a recent uh, committee hearing that we had with the Office of the Inspector General, wherein they cited the state of New York was warned back in 2010 that they did not have adequate controls in place to handle the existing unemployment insurance claims that they had. And I'll just give you a pre-pandemic, an improper payment amount was roughly about 10.34%. After the pandemic, it was almost 30%. Uh, the fraud rate of 4.5%, and this is before pandemic, with, not, with poor controls in place, uh, it went to almost 18%. Uh, the, the claims uh, before the pandemic in 2019, the quarter before, uh, there were $530 million in claims, went to, uh, in 2021, after the first quarter of 2021, went to 6.5 billion, from 530 million to 6.5 billion, an 1124% increase uh, in, in claims because of the lack of New York State to have controls. And while my colleague wants to make this partisan, all of this information is coming from Democratic controller Tom DiNapoli, who has provided numerous reports on warning New York on what is happening to taxpayer money. And the reason I'm so concerned about this is we have created this huge burden on our unemployment insurance trust fund. And that our small employers who were forced to lay off during the pandemic uh, are now paying for this, as are New York State taxpayers, because the funds were squandered uh, that came through either the American Rescue Plan or other uh, CARES Act monies. What, what can we do to get New York up to speed and, and, and really being a true sound steward of taxpayer dollars that have been wasted? And you, you, know, you mentioned you know, ring, uh, international rings up to 50% of the monies. What can we do, what can New York do today to protect its small businesses and its taxpayers in preventing this is colossal fraud that we have seen largely due to the inability of the Department of Labor in New York State to properly implement programs. What can we do like today in the next few months to, to curb the costs that we're seeing to prevent this fraud? And Ms. Simon, I think I'll address it to you first and then maybe Ms. Miller. <clears throat> Certainly. I think the one thing that um, specifically about this hearing and the question that you asked is that the, the questions I have started asking when I look at a state's posture is, are the use cases across the fraud life cycle being addressed? So, I think so. Should I? Yeah, talk right Can in. you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Really close. Okay, yeah. perfect. Um, one of the questions I ask is, if you think about the use cases across the fraud life cycle and ask hard, specific, clear questions of the New York Department of Labor, before a claimant applies, what tools do you have? What information are you getting? What are you doing with that information? As the claimant is applying, how are you verifying their identity? What do you do with high-risk identities? And then after they've applied, when you see suspicious activity, how do you handle that? What tools do you have in place? What processes? How many fraud investigators do you have? How many cases are going to prosecution? Um, but those kinds of questions have not traditionally been asked to um, state departments of labor, certainly not by federal counterparts, and often folks like the state auditor are the ones asking those questions. So I'm happy to have a conversation also offline and give you specific um, advice, but I, I think one of the questions is to get very, very specific about the entire life cycle. What is the state doing? What tools does it have in place? And what is it doing with the information it gathers? Thank you, uh, Ms. Miller, if you could just yeah, I would give just, us a plan. <laughs> sure, I mean, start. I just think one of the things is though, is when no one else is, is looking. So who, who calls one of you guys? someone who says they didn't get a benefit. 
right? Nobody really calls and says, oh my God, there's a ton of fraud in the UI program. That only happens later when the IG puts out a report and everyone gets alarmed. And so when this is done and when this blows over, they're still gonna go back to worrying about getting that benefit out quickly because that's who they're gonna hear from. They're gonna hear from a, cons from a congressperson when a constituent is saying, I'm not getting my benefit. So I'm going back to incentives for, to fraud prevention. Internal controls is not exciting stuff. They don't wanna worry about internal controls until there's a hearing. And so we have to, you, Congress has to incentivize them and build this into their performance metrics. We are glad you're getting benefits out the door quickly, but we also wanna make sure that you are doing things to make sure only eligible benefits, beneficiaries are getting those benefits and not just worrying about the squeaky wheel, which is, did I get my benefit and did I get it quickly? Right, yet we keep flooding these agencies with billions of dollars in taxpayer money and we're hurting our small business community. So thank you so much for your expertise. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Um, those are terrific questions. Mr. Finster.